Hey, welcome. How are we all doing? I am not bad myself and, very excitingly, the weather is a lot better. We actually have light. So we're going to have another go at painting these doors. Plus, I also, so last time, last night when I was painting a door, this is what we did yesterday on the stream that never was. Well, it was, but I deleted the VOD afterwards because I wasn't happy with the lighting. Basically, for some reason, my light, it's never done this before, but it started flickering like the frequency wasn't doing so well on camera. I don't know, it's real weird. So I've recorded it, or we will be doing another painting stream, but with better light today. So this is what we did yesterday. Come on, focus, my friend. Focus. There we go. Um, it's just a speed paint. It's nothing too special. But I'm trying to do a paint that, like, I don't have the best painting skills, you guys. So I'm sort of doing things that are like painting at my level and hopefully is easy enough for people to follow along. Um, the doors that I'm painting today are reject doors. So these are ones that we can't send out for whatever reason. I have a feeling, well, this one is definitely a reject door because it's a little bit... Yeah, I'm just not happy. It's kind of warped a little bit. The print didn't work so well on this one, so that's why this one's a reject. And this one... I can't see any physical problems, so I'm guessing that the reason this one's a reject is because um, one of the magnets got stuck. So, yay! We'll be painting those today. And I thought... Oh! Um, well, A, I thought I'd, I'll paint the base coat wood first. Then I'll do the base for all of them, the stone in just a stone grey. Then I will do the plate metal, um, basically a metallic steel kind of look on the bars. And I'll also do it to get some highlights on the hinges and the door bit. And I will also, over the top of the base coat grey, be just painting a few of these bricks to be different colours to sort of shine out or pick out different colours of the bricks and then doing a dark wash over everything to make it look more kind of muted and old and depending on how we go towards the end there may be a dry brush involved of a paler grey we'll see and as for the materials I'm using uh, I tend to collect a hodgepodge of whatever paints are around so this one is a reaper mini paint that came free in some reaper minis I bought a uh, dusky skin highlight it's called but I find it works really well for stone highlights it's a nice pale grey um, the dungeon grey from army painter I'm a big fan of army painter paints main reason I'm a big fan of army painter paints is because I almost always knock my paint pots over and with citadel paints that means we get paint everywhere with army painter they have um, very small ends so I don't have to worry so much and yeah so I think I'm just going to do a brown layer first. So I haven't used some of my paints in quite a while, so they're going to need a bit of a shake. This one, luckily, I did a big shake yesterday to try and get it a bit more. Hopefully. Um, yep. Let's see if we can get a bit out. I, of course, use the highest technical things. So we have a... Don't know, maybe it's a mayonnaise lid. Some sort of jar as my palette. I know some people use wet palettes and I've used them in b before in the past and they're super cool, super useful and really great for when you accidentally put too much paint out. But I haven't got around to making one. Like my old one, basically I left too much water and paint in there for too long and it went a bit mouldy and gross so I chucked it out. And I need to make a new one out of some Tupperware and I just haven't done it yet, so we are on, uh, what you call it, jam jar lids. To be honest, I could, well, uh, no. I was about to say I could probably make a um, wet palette from my jam jar lid by putting, like, I can make it for today, perhaps, actually thinking about it. Not a permanent wet palette, but just for today. Oh, you know what? That's too much effort. I have to go inside and get some, um, what's it called? You know the brown paper you put in the oven so your stuff doesn't stick to the tray? Greaseproof! Yes. 
I would need to get some um, greaseproof paper and I'm like, yeah, I might have to go inside. So we'll just do the pink uh, jam jar lid today. Alrighty. Man, it is nice weather. It's super warm here. Um, oh, and in case you're curious, no, I haven't primed uh, these pieces. So I know some people, um, to be honest, I've definitely done it in the past, is that I prime pieces usually before I paint them. Um, I haven't with these, mainly because they're reject pieces and I'm going to put a varnish on top anyway that should hopefully keep everything nice and stable. We'll see. To be honest, I prime some minis, but a lot of the times I don't prime just because I'm a bit clumsy. I'm not like the best at looking after things, so with my minis I definitely drop them a lot and it's going to be the same for a lot of my terrain. So they get chipped anyway, so I often have to do touch-ups. Um, so nowadays what I do, and um, what works better for me at least, don't know, don't know if it works for everyone, so I wouldn't recommend it because I don't know if it's good to recommend, but it works for me, is I don't prime my stuff, I just paint straight onto it, and then I do a clear varnish and a really good hard clear varnish, um, like one of the shiny varnishes, because they tend to be a bit stronger. And then once that's dried in, I tend to do a um, matte varnish. And then you get rid of the gloss and it just looks nice. And using that method, I tend not to have too many things um, break anymore, like chip. So yeah, that is what I shall be doing. I'm a big fan nowadays of the um, clear varnish and then matte varnish on top. It has saved me a lot of heartache with minis. Maybe doing the priming before painting and then doing the matte varnish, clear varnish, matte varnish would get an even stronger effect. I don't know. Probably I should try it, but if I'm honest, I'm quite... I don't know, when I paint minis and stuff, I do it because I enjoy it and I do it for me. So it doesn't have to be the best, it just has to be fun. So yeah, I would say take advice from me in terms of painting minis and stuff with a pinch of salt because I just do it how I like to do it, not necessarily how it ought to be done. But hey, if it works. All right. Just do the edges. Just try and go in all those cracks. I'm not too worried if the wood doesn't go into... So on the doors there are... Um, is it going to focus? Ish focus. Yeah, there we go. There are nail holes at the bottom and at the top of all the planks of wood. So if my brown doesn't go in there, that's perfectly fine for me because I have a um, grey base, essentially. So um, it just sort of looks a little bit like nails when it's grey anyway. So I'm quite happy with that. I have, so I did a while ago um, do one where I put metal inside all those grey nail holes, like, um, you know, a metal paint. And it looked really, really cool, and I loved that door. But my goodness, it was a lot of work. Just because it was hard getting the silver to go in there and not, like, make a bubble at the top that would crack. So, I don't know. If you want, like, really detailed stuff, then I think by all means go ahead because it looked badass but it was so much effort that for me personally I probably like the effort didn't equate to how cool it looked for me for like serious mini painters it probably would mind you serious mini painters are unlikely to be watching let's be honest all right that is our base coat of brown do you know what I'm just gonna get 
a little um, plastic tray to put my wet things in so that we don't um, put a load of stuff on the material. Wait a second. And there we go. Oh, it does, it does shine with the light though. Maybe we'll put it back there. There we go. That can be our drying rack thing. And now, I think we'll start on the stone and then we'll do the metal afterwards. Cunningly, I have misplaced all my mini painting brushes. So I have one brush to use and it's quite a dodgy brush. It's quite, basically it's a brush that I've left standing in a jar of water for too long. So, hmm. But it works. I don't need super like delicate stuff for the doors, to be honest, anyway. Mainly because when I make the doors, I usually speed paint them. Just making sure we've got plenty of shaked up, shaken up, shaked up, shaken up. I don't know. Basically, make sure the paint is well mixed. And then it's probably not going to be enough grey, but you never know. I wonder, our um, foster, well, they're not our foster dog, but the dog that we are fostering, that we're looking after at the moment, is um, has gone out about an hour ago, um, was collected by the centre, and is going to meet a potential new owner, which is exciting. It's very much one of those sort of bittersweet things where I'm excited and I hope they get on and it's going to be really exciting for the dog to find a forever home. But oh boy, I love this dog. Like, yeah, they're a lovely, lovely dog and they're going to be a difficult one to give up. I, I predict many tears in our future, but it's going to be so nice to see them go to a, to go to a forever home. Yeah. Hey dog. Hello. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is our overworked apprentice. Hiya! <laughs> Thank you, Mum. Cheers, dude. Hi! <laughs> oh, you're the best. Thank you. You're the best. No. <laughs> oh, you want to see something cool? Oh, that's not cool actually. That is very hot coffee. <laughs> oh, I think I just burnt the tip of my tongue. Hmm. Well, we'll give that a couple of minutes before we drink that. It's a super awesome thermos. Like it does a real good job of keeping things at you know what, it's probably going to take more than a couple of minutes for it to cool down, thinking about it. But it is. It's one of those um, double-walled thermos things. And oh man, it's so good. And having a lid, it means I don't put my paintbrushes in it. And being like such a child's cup, when I knock it over, it doesn't all spill out. It's the best thing. <laughs> I'm harnessing my inner three-year-old. I'm going to be honest, I'm not doing too careful a job of doing the grey and the stonework. Um, mainly because I'm going to be painting over this, painting over the, um, what you call it, the jail bar things in a wee bit. So I'm not too bothered if I get some grey on them. As predicted, we're going to need some more grey. This is, I can't remember if I told you earlier, but just in case I didn't, this is Army Painter Dungeon Grey, which I find is generally just a nice base stonework colour. Presumably what it was designed to be, if it's called Dungeon Grey. Hmm. It's 
always something so relaxing about painting, isn't there? It's one of those very chill like hobbies. Right. We are almost done with this one. Just a little bit more. And a little bit more there. Oh, and a little bit more there. And we have a base coat of stone on one door complete. Next. Oh. I thought for a second that was a missing bit, but it's where the light is reflecting. All right. Ooh. I noticed the robins haven't been coming in recently. Or at least not in the last, what, 40 minutes? The robins often come into my office and um, eat worms. I've got a little pot on my desk and I have a robin can, so we can look at the robins if they come in. But so far, not today. Or at least not since I've started streaming. Sometimes I do wonder if they come in less when I'm streaming just because I'm talking so much. Maybe the noise or something. Who knows? They are cute though. We've so, oh yes, the long tail tits were back on my bird feeders uh, yesterday. We had a um, flock of about what? I want to say five or six. Man, they are some beautiful birds. They really are gorgeous. They've got such delicate little faces. But my favourite bird is our crumbs. Well, the English word for it is um, the fantail, but it's got an actual proper name because um, it was, I believe it was first named by the Maori people who are indigenous to New Zealand. And... I can't remember. It's like picky, picky, pi, piweka, piweka. I can't remember. You will have to Google it. But um, fantails are the English word for it, and they are just the most beautiful birds. Like they're not when they're kind of sat doing nothing. They don't look that spectacular, but they have gorgeous um, tails that, well, like the name suggests, sort of fan out. Um, they look a bit like, uh, you know, um, those sort of, I don't know what they're called, the fans that they do themselves. They've got tails like that. And when they fly, their tails kind of, they do a really beautiful bobbing motion. Absolutely gorgeous birds. Wish I'd been able to have bird feeders up when I was in New Zealand. Unfortunately, um, I was flatting, so wasn't able to, but at some point. There are also, um, we used to get a lot of um, tuis in the tree outside where I was staying. And, oh, they were beautiful too. Beautiful and more important, well, not more importantly, but more excitingly for me at least. Their um, bird song was absolutely gorgeous. They, um, I'm not going to try and imitate it because I can't, but they have a beautiful sort of very varied bird song. Like at times it sounded quite tropical and at other times it could sound quite, I don't know, quite musical, but sometimes quite brash. Like, yeah, you'll, ha you'll have to listen to it to, um, yeah. Oh, I just put stone over the wood. Oh, well, that's okay. We'll fix that. No biggie. Oh, I see why this is a reject. There's a nice crack in there. 
Yep, that explains it. <laughs> oh, that song. I watched um, a D&D show. So some of you guys will know it. D NPC D&D um, by Viva La Dirt League. And I was re-watching some of their episodes. And um, yeah, I won't spoil it, but there's some really good fun bits. And um, that song comes up. And it's only briefly, but I watched it maybe the day before yesterday. And that song has been stuck in my head since. Can't get it out. Worst bit is I only know like a small fraction of the song, which is the bit that was displayed as part of the um, D&D show. So I've just got that tiny fraction of the song on loop in my head. Oh, look at that. More stone on top of the door. That's okay. We'll give it a second pass. Man, the weather is just lovely today. It's one of those days where it's warm, but it's not too hot. Sunny, but not like burny. Just a sort of nice, sort of you can wear jeans and a t-shirt level sun. Super nice. All right, I know you shouldn't use paint to fill gaps. That's like such a waste. And yet, that's 100% a thing I do. Right, well, that one can dry for a little bit. And this one, what do you reckon? Is it dry enough to start doing a second? Like to start doing the, um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna pick out a few bricks, why not? What's the worst that can happen? So, in order to pick out a few bricks, I kind of want them to look quite, uh... similar in colour, but a bit different. They're probably going to be more contrasting now than we actually want them because I'm going to do a dark wash over the top so um, that will help make things look a bit more cohesive. I think, sure, I'm going to use a reddish one and mix it with some grey to get sort of red-grey kind of rock. Like maybe some sort of slatey thing. Well, would you use slate to make a door frame? Probably not, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I should look that up. I always imagined it would be more, um, because slate gets quite sharp. Things like granite or just, what's it called? They use a lot of, um, flint. That's it. They use a lot of flint in, um, stonework around here. And, um, the keep at Arundel Castle, which is, um, in South UK, that has, um, a keep made almost entirely of flint. It's quite beautiful in my opinion. Quite a nice um, building material. It's quite um, shiny in places. Yeah, very pretty. All right, probably got a bit too much paint on my brush, but you know what? That's how I roll. Let's make this big brick at the bottom, a nice brownie ready brick. Probably shouldn't be humming that because I it's gonna be copyrighted. Mm. Hey, that's one brick. I'm gonna pick out in this colour at least, another brick there and another brick there, I think. Again, I'm like, I'm not being that careful about it, if I'm honest. Um, 
there's not a huge amount of overlap with the other bricks, but uh, see if you see, it's like, it's not the best work, but not the worst. And the idea is that um, we're not going to worry too much about that. And we're just going to do a ink wash over the top to sort of get everything more polished together. Oops, a little bit on that brick, but again, we don't really mind. Ah, Hook is at the door, so we'll see if they are interested in any worms. We'll just pick out a couple. And... Oh, I just missed it. <sighs> Next time. And we'll pick out similar but not the same bricks because we want it to look a bit different. Well, I like it to look a bit different because why not? Sorry, I just realised I'm painting in a place that's a bit harder to see. Um, you know, we'll do that one there. Why not? <laughs> Oh, goodness. You see? The song stuck in my head. It's okay. See, I remember being told at school that if you had a song stuck in your head, it was scientifically proven that if you were to hum the national anthem, that song would go away. And it has never worked for me, and I don't believe it was scientifically proven. Not that I know. <laughs> How British is this? I'm just sat here singing the national anthem while I paint. See if that's done the trick. All right, this blue I definitely haven't used for a couple of months, so let's give it the shake of its life. <laughs> I really, um, I should probably, someone was saying to me yesterday, I should put some ball bearings in the paint pots. And you know what? The more I do this, the more I'm like, that is a real good idea. All right, we've got some blue there and I'll mix it with some gray. I wonder if I could also mix a bit with this brown stuff. No, oh, goodness, no, it didn't work at getting rid of that song, did it? Ooh, ooh, that's an ugly color. I quite like that. All right, which one did I most recently do? The wood, so let's go back to jail. Do oh, it's not wildly dissimilar to the stone colour we've already got. It's a sort of slightly greenish take. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe I'll pick out a few extra um, things just because. Just because they're quite similar. even lean that up like that because what we don't want is where I'm putting it down I don't want the paint to like dry onto the plastic underneath it or something like that and you know that annoying thing where you put a mini down and then it gets stuck and you're like oh and then you peel it off and it makes the paint chip or something super annoying so we'll try prop it on its side so that doesn't happen Oh goodness, I was about to hum that song again. Right, we'll chuck you there. Oh yes, blue and a wee bit of grey, I reckon. Hmm. Yeah, see, very similar colours. But that's okay, because once we mix some blue in there, that's going to be different again. No, it's not that different, is it? <laughs> Oh well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
you guys don't have to do the same mixing colours for bricks that I'm doing. I would highly recommend just trying different things out and see what works for you. What ones you like, what works with your colour scheme. I'm going to do quite a, you know, mouldy old like basement kind of colours was what I'm thinking. But you guys might want to do like lighter colours or castle colours or Feywild palette scheme, who knows. We had, um, I had a painting, terrain painting competition not too wildly long ago and um, people were painting some walls and traps and doors and things like that and someone, um, this was a local friendly game store and someone painted um, all their walls and doors and things in sort of pinky, uh, like a kind of... Um, Goodness, what's the word? Pastel palette. And I was surprised at how awesome it looked. Like when they first said they were painting the walls pink, I was thinking to myself, well, I didn't say anything, but I was thinking that it would be interesting to see, but I didn't have much hope. And then they actually did it and they pulled it off, my friends. They did a real good job. And I was thinking, hmm, I shall need to try that at some point. Not today. Today I decided to do just colour palettes that I've done before or am vaguely used to. I do like to experiment with my painting and painting really random things, but I should probably not be experimenting on stream while I'm doing a painting tutorial. Ba -da -da. Oh do that top brick there because that looks like it wants to be painted to me. wonder if we should do one with a bit of like moss or whatever. Could do. Yeah. Not sure. Oh, put another bit of brick on the wood. That's okay. We shall go through it. We shall do another layer. Mm. Let's just mix some, get a different colour again. Quite a similar colour, isn't it? Well done, never mind. We'll do a similar colour on this one. To be honest, I probably picked out enough bricks. It doesn't have to be like super detailed or anything. I'm just doing it for a bit of fun. All right, so let me just think about how we're going to do this next because I want, basically, normally I'd go away and make myself a cup of tea or something. Well, not tea, I don't like tea, but a cup of coffee and leave them to dry. But I'd rather not do that on the stream. So maybe I will redo the wood of the door that I've been talking about doing and then... I will do the metal of the jail. Hello. We have Hook is nearby again. Oh no, Hook has got their back to you. Harder to see. Oh goodness. Um, that's not well focused at all, is it? Apologies, guys. Properties. Let's see if we can configure video, camera control, focus. Let's see. Is that better or worse? Quite hard to tell, isn't it? Maybe it's just too dark. Oh well. Oh well. Back to painting. Sorry, this, this wood, I know that uh, oak brown it's called. Um, this one definitely needs a good shake. It always does. It's one of those ones that is super annoying because it separates real easy. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Another one just almost came through the window, but I was reaching across. The, um, if you're wondering where the 
Robin Cam is. I can just show you. Here's my hand. And here's Robin Cam. It is like super close. I have great hopes one day of multi-classing into Druid in real life. And having loads of like little familiars. Mainly birds. But you know, maybe the occasional um, fox or something. Oh. Just had um, Hook scare off a baby then. Baby Robin. Um, obviously not a real baby. <laughs> we get, um, they're quite territorial robins. So they often, um, Hooker's got quite possessive over my pot of worms and has been, um, chasing off any of the other robins that come nearby. But they don't keep an eye on it all the time. So there tends to be like a little sort of queue of robins and um, they almost take it in shifts and I swear it's after Hook has taken some food you'll generally see a baby or another robin coming close directly after and I will swear that they watch and wait until they know that Hook has like got some food and has gone off to eat it or whatever and then they come it's quite clever really I also have great hopes of at some point in the future um, feeding a load of crows and having a load of crows as my friends. But sadly, we don't seem to get many crows in the area. Because I would love to be a crow queen. <laughs> Plus, they're like really smart birds. That would just be cool. Alright, we've done our brown wood. So we shall do our metal. Oh, this is another one that needs like a hell of a shake. But we'll do our metal on the jail and then we'll pick out some on the wood. I'm almost wondering, I've never, I haven't done a wood dry brush before on the other one because I sort of felt like I didn't need it. Um, I mean, we could. We'll see how um, quickly it dries in the weather today. If it dries quick, we'll do a dry brush. If it's taking a while to dry, we'll just go for a wash and call it a day. Basically, I wanted today to be like, here's a vaguely speed painty, you can do at home painting doors thing. You know, look, you don't have to be that skilled. <laughs> so we'll see if we do dry brushing, maybe. All right, do you reckon this has been shaken up enough? Yeah, we'll call that shaken up enough. Right, uh, and dry it on a bit of loo roll. All right. So, again, I'm not being like super duper careful except where I'm near the edges because we'll be doing a wash anyway. I have to say, I am a huge fan of washes when doing painting of terrain or whatever. Because it's just so wonderful that it covers so many of your mistakes or where things look a bit rough or a bit like, you know, not super delicately done. And then you do a wash and everything's fine. And it's amazing. It's like magic. It's especially amazing for people like me that are like, it's good enough painters. I'm not really, um, like, I don't know. I don't think I paint badly, but I would certainly never call myself um, professional or whatever. I do it just for fun and I definitely cut corners in my painting. It's one of those things where, like, I so often, I don't know. It's just nice to have something low stakes, maybe. Hello. Oh, is that a red kite feather? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, we'll do it here. From bird of prey that flies over our garden. Gorgeous. Thank you. I will put that in my jar of cool feathers. I have a jar of... 
Sorry, it's stuck to the paint on my finger. <laughs> I have a jar of cool feathers from birds that hang out around the office, including <gasps> from the woodpeckers and from the parakeets. Not that the parakeets have gone on my bird feeders yet, but they will. They will. One day. I guess I just need to find the right food for them. I reckon, hmm. Something I've been thinking about, so I use, ooh, ooh did you see that? Just threw my um, paint pot everywhere. See, this is why I like army painter paints, because I can throw my paint pot and not get paint all over me. Give it a good shake. All right. Just turn that over so it's got an equal chance of drying on both sides. It's nice to do something that's just for fun sometimes. Man. I haven't painted properly in quite a while. It's just nice to do. Sometimes I find that painting is almost, it feels a bit like a meditation where you've just got some quiet time and you're focusing on one thing. Yeah. Super nice. <laughs> oh, there comes that song again. I need a bit more silver, it seems. Or steel grey. Or is it steel grey? Plate mail grey. Oh, plate mail metal. Apologies. Oh, hope that wasn't too much. I am like a, such a miser with my paints. I think because they're so much more expensive compared to normal paints. And I, oh, I try not to squeeze too much. Like get too much out and just like, I like to use every last bit of paint. So for example, I'm, ah. Oh, Got a little bit on my stonework, that's fine. Hey, rubbed off, easy. Like that little bit that I'm not gonna be using that paint for, that's gonna really annoy me. Probably after this stream, I'm gonna wet that paint and use it on something just so that I can say to myself, oh, okay, the last bit of paint was used. So who knows what random thing in my office is suddenly going to be slightly oranger later. would say oh could probably do just a little bit more on the bottoms there but I would say that is pretty much good base cover done oh I'm painting it off camera oops leave that there hopefully that can dry on both sides without like coming off too much right let's give doing these again. Uh, it's my favourite bit when you um, do the door handle and the hinges because it suddenly goes from looking yeah okay to oh that's a door. So the only thing is that this brush is absolutely terrible in, a, in all sorts of areas. Let's try and get it more. Ugh. Sorry I, I hate the taste of metallic paint. Trying to make it a bit less, you know, in every direction at once, but I don't think it really did much. That's okay. Mm -hmm. 
you know what, if it's worse, yeah, I'm not going to care too much and I'll just go over with some brown on the edges. How about that? That'll make life a lot easier if we're not stressing about going over the edges. That's what I will do. Okay, I really, I really took that concept and ran with it on the top one, didn't I? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay. Maybe, maybe we'll calm down on the other side, Annabelle. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> That's a bit better because it's easier to cover, in my opinion. Oops. Oh, we'll go over it with some more brown. It's fine. That's okay. No, oh, there goes that song again. All right. Yeah, we'll definitely go over bits of that where it's gone over the edge with some brown. That's fine. We're going to let it dry for a little bit. But I do have a load of excess silver that I haven't used. Man, maybe I can just... I don't know if this needs any extra paint, but it just feels so bad leaving it to dry. And the sun is so warm today, like, it's definitely going to dry before I finish the stream, so... You know what? I'm just going to randomly paint second layers of bits. Because why not? Nope. Goodness, I really need to do something to get that song out of my head. Um... It's been literally like that for two days, where any quiet moment, any space between my thoughts, I start humming that song. Tell you what, after this, I might put my headphones in and listen to, like, loads of other songs and hopefully get it changed to something else. At least for a bit of variety. Go for a different earworm. Wrong bit of silver paint. There we go. A. All right. Theoretically, that needs to dry for a little bit. So we'll just leave that there. What do you reckon? Will the coffee have cooled down enough to drink? Still quite warm, but not burn your tongue warm. I do like this mug. <laughs> Very hard to spill things. Alrighty. Shall we see if we can... Oh, is that a little bit of brown left over? <gasps> is that brown or is that water? No, it's water. Never mind. I got excited then. I thought I could use up old paint. We'll do a little bit more brown for going over where I went over the edges. Let's try that. Yeah, I definitely need to get some more brushes, I reckon. But, hey oh. Mm -hmm. Nope. Makes everything look so much nicer when you have neater edges. And it's not too difficult. Um, for these, at least, when I go over the edges, I like to then put the brown on the wood and just sort of gently push my brush up to the edge. And because the um, hinge is sort of raised, you can generally get your brush to make quite neat lines without going over the edge, even in the corner bits there, which is nice. Ah, hmm. oh, ooh, look at that. It still looks quite silvery at an angle, and then at another it looks great. Isn't that interesting? Does it do that in real life? Not really. Interesting. Well, maybe it'll need a second coat of brown. It's funny how you pick things up on camera sometimes. And it doesn't look that way in real life, but then you see it on camera and you take another look in real life and you can just faintly see it. And it's kind of helpful sometimes for picking up things that otherwise you would have missed. 
All right, much better. We'll just do around that doorknob. There we go. And probably need a bit of brown, extra brown to do the other side. So we'll take a little bit more. And there we go. That'll be enough, I hope. Mm -hmm. Oh. I need to make a D&D &D character. Well, I've half got an idea for a D&D &D character. I'm playing in a one shot soon and I want to play a sort of mad artificer. You know, um, basically an old fashioned, like one of those old um, stereotypical tinkerers that are making um, all sorts of different designs and things and they're all going slightly wrong or a bit pointless or a bit useless. Um, if any of you guys know Terry Pratchett, um, if you've heard of a guy in there, there's an inventor called Bloody Stupid, <laughs> Bloody Stupid Johnson, and he invents all sorts of things and they always go slightly wrong for whatever reason, usually because he's like entirely mucked up the measurements or, you know, got his width and his length, ones in centimetres, ones in metres or something. And so everything's ridiculously out of proportion or wrong. And I love that like concept. So that's going to be my artificer for the one shot. And I need to think of some ideas of some really terrible inventions to give my artificer. Like, and I haven't quite worked it out. I'm thinking maybe something like um, some sort of anti hay fever inhaler that only works when not in the presence of flowers. Could be a good one. No, definitely works, but only when you are nowhere near any sort of vegetation. Could be a fun one. I don't know what else. I want their weapon to be something ridiculous. Something that makes no sense. Not sure what yet. Ah, yeah. Look at that second coat and you can't see it. Perfect. Ah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, I reckon that is pretty much ready for its wash. Probably should dry, but... Okay, I might do a dark wash on this stone first and then I'll do it on the metal because I reckon that's not going to be dry yet. But I'm trying to do it speedily so we won't wait for it to dry. Sorry, super noisy plane. Oh goodness, that song again. Yeah, I definitely need to do something to get that earworm out my head. Put you, I don't know, over in the corner. And I might even add a little bit of water to that wash because I know that this is a very dark wash. Like, it says it's a grey wash, but in my opinion, that is black. Like, look at that. That's black, right? That's black. Doesn't matter. It's still a very good wash, but it's a lot darker. So good for like dungeony effects, but not so good if you want just like a pale grey wash or even a medium grey wash. This is like definitively a dark wash. I wonder how the foster dog is doing. They have probably are literally meeting their potential new owners as we talk. I hope well. They deserve the best. Oh, goodness. Hopefully we'll be home soon. Man, 
they're going to be a tough one to say goodbye to. They are like the cutest ever. Um, if you guys haven't seen our foster dog, our current foster dog at the moment, they are a Great Dane. But they are like the cutest Great Dane. Like, I know they're massive, but they think they're a lap dog and they'll come and sit on your lap. And my goodness, they are heavy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you feel sort of swallowed by their presence. But man, so cute. And like acting like a puppy and like playing with their ball by themselves and like throwing it around in the garden and catching it. And then, oh... Yeah, coming for cuddles all the time, like such a cuddly dog. Doesn't really understand its size when it comes for cuddles. <laughs> Don't think they really understand their size when they're out for walks either, because sometimes you get like argy-bargy little dogs that come up to them, like pugs or whatever. And our Great Dane, or sorry, our foster Great Dane, will literally back off from this tiny little pug because the pug's being like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. And our dog's like... Ooh. Oh, I don't know how to deal with that. Oh, I'd better leave. Oh, this tiny pug could, you know, could attack me. Me, who's like ten times their size and could probably stamp on them. It's super cute. They're very, yeah, very good natured. All right, that is our stonework dry wash thing. We'll let that dry for a bit. How are we going to place that to let it dry without, like, wetness going on the ground? Probably should have thought of that, shouldn't I? Yeah, that would have been smart. Didn't though. So we'll put it like that. And then if the bottom gets a bit dodgy, then well, the bottom's a bit dodgy. What can you do? Um, that's the joy of magnets, I suppose, that you can just have it kind of propped up. All right, let's go over the, the stonework on this one. So, so satisfying putting a wash on and it goes in all the cracks and like really defines the bricks. Mm. I should really start um, working out my own kind of colour palettes and like what paints and what washes I like for what effects just so that I get some consistency in all the terrain I paint for myself. I haven't done that. Really probably should. should. Try out a couple of palettes. I think it's one of those jobs that you do when you have time and I just haven't found that moment yet. You know, I've been sort of waiting for when I have time for about, I don't know, five years? <laughs> I've heard that this thing called free time exists and I'm like, I'm excitedly waiting to, you know, encounter the concept, but I joke, I, I have free time, we do things. Usually in my free time I play D&D, so I just prioritise playing and living stories over painting my terrain. Probably bad as a terrain, like, salesperson or someone that designs terrain or whatever, but there you go. Ah, oh. I do love playing D and D. It's just such a great medium for telling stories. I find, because it's one of those things that, when you watch a TV story, a TV show, or a story through radio or a book or whatever. It's usually one author or a couple of authors have written it um, and they've usually got an idea of who the main character is, who the backup cast is, blah, blah, blah. But when you do D&D, &D, there's like four or five main characters that are all well thought out or, depending on your players, are often well thought out and played individually by a person whose sole job is making that character like living that character and reacting so a lot of the conversations you get like the improv it just feels more realistic to me it feels like a more realistic way of storytelling and having like character interactions because they are real interactions just between the players All right how are we going to wash this because everything's still wet to touch hmm 
I know how we're going to do that. We're going to, um, what's this? Is this magnetic? Yes, it is. Oh, only a bit though. Okay, mm. we'll put it like that and then do the wash this way. make it super grimy jail door it hasn't been used in like ages so it's all gross yeah. oh i see i've got a bit of a thread there a bit of fluff go away fluff there we go Fluff be gone. Okay. Do the other side. Mm-hmm. We shall do the other side. Like this. There we go. This is actually great. Might have to use this more in the future. Hmm. bad super gross door hell yeah hell yeah Ooh. and you my friend oh yes the wash dark wash on the wood is good because you start to see all the grain mmm uh, it doesn't show up quite so well on camera, but that's okay. We'll show it at the end. Another thing that's interesting about this wash is it tends to look darker going on, but once it's dried, it looks lighter, which is always interesting. All right, that's one side. Do the edge. Do the bottom do the top one do the side and now do the other side and Nice. Oh, I do like the door. Okay, we'll let that dry for a wee sec. And then we can decide if we want to do any dry brushing or not. I'm not quite sure myself. To be honest, I quite like it as it is, but we'll hold it up to camera and have a look as a close up. See if it can focus. There we go. Focusing not too badly. Still a bit wet, but you can Oops. see the grain comes up quite nicely with the dark wash. You could do a dry brush where um, some of the bricks are textured and it doesn't really show super well. I noticed that the wash has um, gone into the crack. Oh, goodness, that's made it very dark. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna, you know, brush that away slightly. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Well done, Annabelle. That's fine. <laughs> Well, I guess we are going to be dry brushing that bit, maybe, now that I've done that. I don't know, can you see it? Does it look like a big deal? Probably not, to be honest. I've just made that brick a bit too dark with my sudden... Okay. 
So if we are going to do a dry brush, then I will go back to using the same dungeon grey that I used for the base coat. I know that a lot of people use lighter colours, to be honest, I've used lighter colours and I get real good effects, but because I'm particularly going for like dingy, you know, dungeon-like um, wood pieces, um, door pieces, I think using the same grey that's a bit, def yeah, that means the highlights aren't that actually, you know, bright. The only thing that bothers me is I'm not sure if it's dry enough to start dry brushing like the base coat and I don't want us to be waiting for like half an hour for it to dry just to do a dry brush that will take five minutes you know so hmm. tell you what we'll try a dry brush on one of the bricks and we'll very quickly find out if it's dry enough or not and if it's dry enough we'll keep going if not we shall call it there Ooh. do you reckon is that brush dry it's now So, I'm still like not super proficient with dry brushing. So from what I understand, you need to get your paintbrush pretty damn dry, but with some paint on it. And like lightly. And it's a sort of less is more sort of thing. Oh yeah. It's quite a subtle effect. I'm just realising you're not going to see it when it's down there, are you? Let's try and do it up here. We'll move the door on the ins like open it a bit because I don't want to accidentally dry brush over the wood. That would be super annoying. Hmm. It is making an effect, but I'm kind of it's not showing up super well on camera. Looks quite nice in real life. <laughs> You're gonna have, uh, I know that's like a thing where it's like, oh, you can't see it. But I, as the painter, I'm going to tell you that it looks nice. But it does look quite nice in real life. Even if it's not showing up super well on camera. But that's fine. I tell you what, I made all that, oh, I'm not going to use a lighter grey, but I'm just going to use the dungeon grey because, you know, that's the colour I used as a base coat. But the more I look at it, the more I'm like, I could probably benefit from a lighter dry brush. But, you know, that's fine. That's for people to experiment with. Might even just do a bit in there because the threshold probably gets walked on a bit more. And then, yeah. You know, I'm not going to dry brush the other one until after the paint has dried. So what I might do, because I was going to upload this video to YouTube, just so people that, you know, um, videos on demand, VODs on Twitch, they usually um, disappear after 14 days. And I know some people were super, not super upset, but you know, had wanted to watch the videos and they weren't there anymore. So this time I'm going to upload it to YouTube. Oh yeah. So... I might wait till this is dried, do a little bit of dry brushing on that one, and then do a picture at the end of the video to show you guys. But otherwise, yeah, that is me speed painting some doors. And we'll take that out of the way because we don't need it anymore. We'll just sort of hold it up to camera. We'll do a couple of nicer shots at the end. But yeah. Thank you guys for coming along and I will be, now that I have sorted out my top down camera, hopefully we'll be doing more painting streams in the future. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye!